welcome back. All right, part two of the Let's Play Telestians, where the knights were about to search this ruin. Let's check it out. We're going to hit the hit search button right down here. Your hero, Count Charles, searches the legendary pond and confronted two rare peritons and was victorious. You have found the bow of bloodshed. Missile 15. Okay, so this is a 15% chance that I'll automatically get a hit uh, before a battle even starts. So, okay. Now you don't automatically get the hero's item equipped into your hero's inventory. You see this item bag here, that means it's on the ground and you need to pick it up. So down here, we can look at our hero inventory. Bring that up. This shows our hero, his strength, hit points, movement, and uh, he's level one right now. So we want to pick up this bow. Uh, like I said, gives you 15% chance. Now it's equipped. So we're equipped, pick up, equip. You can drop it, pick it up. This is how you can exchange different weapons. So each hero has a weapon, armor, and relic that they can equip, and only one. So if you choose a different weapon, it's not like you can dual wield or something. Uh, but weapons usually uh, help your strength. Armors, for the most part, help your hit points. And relics can be like a variety of things. They can increase your speed. They can make you immune to like poison or assassinations. Uh, just a lot of interesting stuff, like kind of that like, curveball there. All right, so we're set. Let's head up this way. Next up, we have a knight coming out that we're gonna come, he's gonna come join us. Let's see how much, how far he can go. So he can still attack. Let's get everyone over here so I can attack this turn. All right, so we got five units. Swordsmen who are strength four. Knights are strength five. And my hero is strength six, now has that 15% bonus. Now, this icon will attack right away, but if you hold down the control and click, you get this little advisor. I mean, he's not always right, but at least if he says something like you're gonna get slaughtered, you probably don't want to attack. <laughs> so this one, my lord, we will destroy them. Sounds like we got a good chance, so let's go. All right. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. So what happens is, like you said, if you're attacking, you're on the bottom, and the defenders are up top. Um, in this case, I happen to have stats on, so it shows uh, the strength of each of my units. Uh, the left is the hit points, or sorry, the left is the strength, and the right is the hit points. Now, you'll notice that this is red for each of these units that means there's some sort of bonus in play. So if it's all black, that just means it's sort of like the vanilla default stats of those, those army units. Red means there's bonuses. So in our case, the reason why our swordsman who usually has a strength of four has gone up to five, and our knight who usually has a strength of five has gone up to six, and our hero who has a six has gone up to seven, is because the knights as a faction get a plus one strength bonus when attacking castles. This is unique to the knights, it's not anywhere else. If these units were to fight on the, the field or the hills or the woods or whatnot, you, they would not have got that bonus. Um, so real quickly, there's that. And then stats on or off, um, I, I just clicked it, but there's actually a hotkey, I think it's H, and you can go into the settings too and you can turn the stats on or off. If you don't like seeing the stats, then it's not there. So once I click it, it tells me what do I want to do with Fort Flamewick. Do we want to occupy it? Which means it's a level one castle. Uh, we won't get any gold from it because it's already a, a small castle. Uh, and it will take us build two units. Okay, so there's two units that will be at the castle that we can build from. Or we can raise it, in which case we won't get anything and nobody could use the castle at all. I want to occupy it as a, uh, a knight. Raise is maybe a good strategy if like you were sort of getting attacked on a lot of different fronts and you didn't you needed to leave your castle because you couldn't support it anymore 
but you didn't want the enemy to take it over because they had maybe tons of gold and they could just keep building units, you can kind of bleed them out a little bit by raising. Or if you were doing like a strategy of kind of hit and run, you know, almost like, you know, the American Minutemen who kind of just came in, destroyed stuff and then retreated back to their forest or their woods. Uh, so we'll go ahead and occupy. All right. And now we got two castles we can see here in the mini map. That's where these buttons come in. You can rotate through your castles to see what's going on. Here it shows our three defenders that we just took over. And I am think we're still doing good on gold, so I'm just going to pick this guy. These guys are almost the same. I mean, I have an additional strength, which is good, but my upkeep is two. Here the strength is slightly less, but less upkeep in case you were struggling with gold. And then I am going to fortify... What I like to do early game is build out these guys, maybe like four or eight units. And as soon as I get that many, then I'll send them out to help take over more castles. So I'm just gonna leave them fortified in the castle for now. All right, so what do we got? We got another small castle here. So let's probably head that way. Um, we are out of movement, so let's go to the next turn. Okay, we're fortified, can't move, let's unfortify. Now I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave one guy here. So you can select which guys you wanna move by left clicking. Right clicking again gives you the stats. So I'll left click these three guys. We'll head down here. Um, I'm gonna leave this guy fortified. And then I'm waiting for the Pegasus, three more turns. on around. We want to take over this castle next. All right, so we could wait one more turn for the Pegasus and then another turn. I have a feeling we could win this one just with our three guys. So let's just take the risk. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to press H. Surprisingly, didn't switch anything, maybe because the battle's over with the stats. Down here, one thing I wanted to show you in the last battle, you can look at the actual details of like every, like all the calculations, right? So we can see our swordsman killed the brave man. So it gives us the blue as like the winner. And it kind of shows everything, right? So it shows my strength was five. Uh, the base, base is four, but then one plus one against castles. And then the brave man just had a strength of three, but because he's in a castle, he gets a plus one bonus. So with a level one castle, you get a plus one bonus. At level two, you get a plus two bonus. And a level three castle, you get a plus three bonus. That's the maximum. So three is the additional strength bonus you get. Again here, um, it shows the brave man beat him, same idea. And then here's my knight, he has strength six and strength six again. Anyway. So the combat log is there in case you're kind of like, why the heck did like this unit destroy all these other guys? You might see stuff about assassination. You might see stuff about, um, you know, missile attacks and just other magical spells and weapons. Look at this guy. So we got a Billman. So this is new. Okay, so he is strength four and has a little less, little more upkeep than a swordsman but he gets a bonus of anti-mount. So the anti-mount bonus means if he goes against any sort of like cavalry or horse unit, he will have an additional plus one strength. So he'll now become strength five. This unit is great when you encounter people with cavalry units, but there's no need really to do it right at the moment because why spend the extra money and stuff like that right now when I don't know who's coming at me and whether they have cavalry or not. So. It's good to know, but um, nothing we need to do at the moment. All right, what do we got? We got nine movements. So I'm actually going to wait for my Pegasus to do a little scouting and kind of regroup. We got three castles now. We are generating. So here's our treasury. Uh, total gold, 680. We're making 115. We're losing 10 gold for upkeep. So we're making about 95 gold or what, 105 gold. Three castles, turn nine. Okay, yep, so let's just end turn. 
All right, we got our Pegasus. Let's get moving and sort of scout stuff out. You know, I've sort of, this is just me uh, in my own notice, like, you know, my own observations. I've noticed usually there's nothing of interest on the final row uh, and the top. Like, I don't really ever see ruins or castles like on the, the boundary edges. So I sort of tend not to, um, you know, care about like exploring it or wasting movement in that direction. So this is cool. Here's another castle that looks pretty promising. Um, it's a, uh, just four brave men, looks pretty easy to take over. So as soon as I get another knight, I'm gonna bring these guys down. And what I'll do is I'll circle around with my uh, Pegasus. Now the Pegasus can go straight into the water. Notice I have two, two movement points. I can go straight into the water, nothing's affected. If you bring regular units here into the water, which I think we did for half a second, but I didn't mention anything over here, it actually takes six movement points to go from land to water. And then when you're on water, it's just two movement points. And when you uh, disembark or embark, uh, I guess it's disembark, on back onto the ground, it's only two movement points. So it's in the water and out of the water, it's easy to move around um, going into the water initially, that's where you have your largest movement costs. No movement costs or penalties for a flying unit. Cool, okay, so our trusted advisor says we have four knights who have offered to join our ranks. Uh, these are your standard knights, which are pretty solid. I mean, a strength five, um, upkeep, you know, is up there. We can see here that they're gonna arrive at Fort Highborn, which is cool. It's already kind of on the exterior of my territory. I don't have to move them from far back inland. And we have about 887 gold, and they want 64 gold for these four. This is a no-brainer. This would cost two, four, six, eight build turns normally. So 64 gold for eight build turns, I think it's definitely worth it. And actually now we got a pretty solid crew here of guys. So we're gonna just head right down here. Um, they're fortified, yep. So let's work our way down. And I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I can't attack this turn. I don't even think we need the Pegasus anymore though that we got so many knights. Here's another good one. Great, this is a uh, good. Level two, hmm. That might be worth exploring. I'd love to have some level one ruins. Uh, level three is the highest amount of ruins. I mean, the highest amount, the, the most powerful ruins. So you got three levels of ruins. Level one is pretty easy, almost for sure you're gonna take them over. Level two is a decent chance of taking over. And then level three, you this guy needs to be higher than seven strength. This guy probably needs to be like nine or 10 strength at least to be able to take over something like that. Um, move these guys for a little bit. You know what, we're doing good on gold. Um, I'll do a split, kind of one, one, I think. And there's really no enemies around, so I think I'm just gonna move along here. Uh, okay, so see, I'm at 13, so this should take me down to seven. And then we just work our way down. Now, I don't have enough movement points to get back on land. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to attack from water to land. Um, when you attack, even if you attack water to water, you are capped at a strength of four, uh, just because you're on water, I guess. So if we come out and we attack, all our units would be capped at a strength of four, which would be no bueno. I wouldn't want to do that, so I'm going to go onto land first and then attack. There are some magical items your hero can get specifically that will negate that water penalty. And some units, such as like flying units, like they wouldn't get penalized from what I've seen. Let's see what else we got. So we're building knights there. We're building up. We're, this one almost looks ready. Uh, I'm going to wait for two more and then I'll head out this way and see what's going on. 
This is going to take a little bit more mound power. Maybe when my next Pegasus comes, I'll combine them all and see what we can do here. Uh, okay, yeah, let's explore. Always good to get an idea of your surroundings. Here's another weak castle we could probably hit real quick. Um, bunch of castles out this way. Great. Something here. Is that? No, it's just this one. Oh, okay. What do we got? Level two again. Yeah, so weird. So interesting. Boom. All right. So we leveled up. Heroes can level up based on. Um, I don't know if it's just time. Like if you sometimes I've just played multiple turns and they eventually gain a level just over time. But um, they definitely gain levels when you take over castles. They definitely gain levels when, for like any battle. And if you're like searching ruins, they've gained levels. So with level one, or I guess upgrading to level two, you get an extra hit point. I'm sorry, strength and additional movement. So what's this popping up? Oh, Count Charles, okay. Cool. So if we look at our hero, we'll see he's level two with a seven strength. So he'll actually be coming into this battle with a strength eight because of his uh, castle bonus. Sweet. Occupy. And let's do that same strat, go one on one. All right, let's head over to, let's leave a couple guys here. Um, so I'll take three with me. How much movement we got? We don't got a lot. I don't really want to get caught in the water, but I think we'll be okay. Fortify these guys. Um, you're at three, that's fine. You're at one. I'm actually going to take these three guys and move them down here. I just in case someone sneaks over here. I, I mean, I'm starting to see, but someone might sneak in here and take this castle quick. At least this one, I know they have to come up. This is the great thing about kind of being starting here in the corner. And, you know, no one's going to come from the top or side. So it's basically like just a nice two front um, battle. So see, this is where like the flying guys just crush it. It's just, you can fly over the swamp, this jungle. Super convenient. Uh, with with terrain, I haven't talked about this yet in this playthrough, but different terrain gives you different bonuses. So dense jungle, if you are the defender, you will get a bonus. Uh, with hills, you'll get a bonus. Let's see, terrain, jungle. So actually, okay, so only the reptilians get a defensive bonus, interesting. On hills, okay, so for hills, everybody gets a plus one defense bonus if they're the defender. So not, not, the, not the attacker, but the defender. Uh, the Gandiantans get a plus two bonus. Dwarves actually get a plus three bonus. So having your dwarves up in the hills makes them super strong. And we have dwarves that we're fighting against in this game, so we are going to avoid attacking them in the hills at all cost. So we're here, let's see. All right, so we're exploring out and we will keep going until we find someone. Uh, let's go ahead and move you out real quick. Defend, let's get this guy. All right, so I see a lot of great castles. Wow, we finally found a level one ruin, ancient ruins of illusions, all right. We are definitely going to go explore that ASAP. Um, hopefully nobody else comes. In the meantime, let's see. I've got three units. I kind of want to stay on the hills. We'll shop here. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to stop here. We'll get uh, this guy exploring right at the start of the next playthrough. And... If you haven't already, hit that like button or share it. Check out Telestians um, on Steam. It's it's a great game. It's like just the fact that it's sort of low-key like this where you can kind of like step away for a second or just have your own turn to work on it, I think is 
it works for the right situations you know you're not always like real time playing someone um so you know certain times of the day or whatever i think it just works out really well but i'll be back soon thanks